What's up, everybody? My name is Jameson Tank. Welcome back to the Jameson on the Rocks podcast. Today we are doing episode number 50. Woo! 50 episodes. Glad to be here. Uh, gonna mix it up for the 50th. I wanted to do, been wanting to do this for a long time. Um, had a lot of people asking me how I just booked my band's first tour. We did a little tri state tour, uh, 35 dates. We've done 50 dates this year, which doesn't seem like a lot to yet to play them all. And I uh, just had so many people asking me, so many bands, and uh, I see a lot of bands making mistakes in this this category, in my opinion. So I feel like uh, if I had any sort of knowledge on it, which I think I do a little bit, uh, that I could help some people out, to help some bands get some shows, which is what it's all about. And uh, yeah, so we're going to do it today. I got a few tips. I wrote some things down I wanted to talk about. Uh, I'm going to tell you how I booked my band's first tour. Let's get into it. So... Uh, step number one is kind of an obvious step to me, but uh, I felt like it was worth noting. Um, play local shows is step number one. Go ahead and try to take over your hometown kind of stuff. Like build something that, that makes other towns want to book you is what I mean per se. So uh, at least be playing the five cities around you. You know, Anything within an hour I feel like you should be hitting as long as there's a scene there of some sort. Uh, and in doing this, you're honing your craft musically, which is probably the most important thing I guess. And uh, you're getting your stage presence down. You're getting all that stuff down. Uh, if you've been playing for a while, you can skip this stuff, obviously. But you're building a track record is very important, very important part of it. And if you're doing things right, you should be filming everything you do, which is what I try to do. I will say I've missed some. But film everything in the beginning because your EPK is just going to be slam empty for a little while. You know what I mean? You've only played two shows and one was at your mom's house, like just hanging out with all your mom's friends playing to 10 people. You know what I'm saying? So, if you can get any show filmed with people in it, with you playing live, this is what the venue owners are going to want to see, if you get what I mean. Um, they are going to want to see evidence that this is what you do, kind of, sort of. Not that you're just like, oh, like we'll just play, you know what I mean? They want to see you taking yourself seriously. Which kind of takes us into step number two, leading off step number one, which is build a badass EPK. Very important step. A lot of times, the first thing the venue owners ask me is, Let's see the EPK, and usually I just go ahead and send it now so they don't have to ask anymore. But going off step one, you're playing the shows and filming your first shows is is ammunition for your EPK per se. So you're going to take all those videos that you've got and put them in your EPK. Every show you play, do you want to show history list in your EPK? I'm going to tag my EPK in the uh, comments of this. So if you want to look at my EPK and see what I'm talking about, I've got a flipbook EPK, which is kind of fancy. I don't really care for the... Uh, like the CD Baby EPKs, in my opinion, those are kind of like stiff and like uh, super, I hate to say corporate, but like just like no uh, expression in them kind of. And you want your EPK to stick out, you know, you want to be like, oh, these, wow, this is different, you know. And uh, I did the Flipbook EPK, which you'll see in my bio, it's pretty cool. And um, you're putting everything on there. Put your list of covers on there if you're a cover band. Put your list of originals. Put which songs you play. Uh, I have a lot of I had a lot of in you start asking me for that like hey what songs are you guys playing like they just want to know if you're gonna match their audience they already have it they don't have to ask you that's one less email you have to send that's one less email that could, that they could get lost in the clutter you know and not respond to you put your cover list on there put pictures of the band on there put a little description of the band members I mean anything that can make them connect with you and want to book you is important in my opinion so all this stuff helps a ton um, in like just the viewing process. Which takes us to step three, or tip three, whatever, whichever way you like to go with it, is hone your pitch. Your pitch is very important. I, I think this might be the most important step, in a way, is uh, honing your pitch, which is your email, per se, for the most part. you got to have your story told in an email that is not too long, kind of. So I'm also going to tag a picture of the emails that I send, not the exact one, but I'm going to send you a template, or I'm going to put a tag a template up here somewhere in this video. And you can see what I mean. Um, you want to? Let me just pull one up. Actually, you know what? Let's see what we got. I'm gonna pull up an actual one. Pull up an actual one. Let's see. Hold on. Checking. 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 Okay. So you're gonna start the email in the in the subject tab. You're gonna want to put insert band name booking with an exclamation point. That's what I always do. It's something to stick out. Then again, you know, these these rules are all just my, that I, I've tested and seen. If your subject line sticks out, it helps a ton, I think. So, insert band name, booking, exclamation point. Another thing I do in emails is I always pretend as if the person I'm reaching out to wants to book bands. So, I'm always like, thank you for helping getting us booked. Uh, we would love to come play. Thanks for considering us, that sort of stuff. Don't be like, 
I don't know if you guys book bands or whatever, but we would really love to play. Like we don't play very much. You know, you don't want to you don't want to put that energy into it. You want to put the energy into it is that you need to book us. This is why. So, let me read this email. Okay, here we go. I'll start it out with, "Hey, my name is Jameson Tank. I'm the lead singer and frontman of Athens band Jameson Tank. I I heard from insert that you were the best contact to reach out to about getting booked." Even if I haven't heard from someone, if I just pick their email up off the Instagram, I always make it assume like I've been told that this is the correct thing. You don't want to bother people, you know. You don't want to be like, hey, this is me spamming you. So that's kind of worked for me. I'll say um, this is uh, I heard from insert name or I just heard that this is the best way to reach out to you. And assuming you had the email, it is, you know. And hold on, I'm scrolling. <laughs> and then you'll want to say skip a line. And give a little brief rundown on your band. Like, not long. Like, I used to put the whole bio in there. and stopped doing that because it's too much to dig through. Um, you want to say, insert band name, is a band from Athens, Georgia. We're extremely passionate about what we do. We're college musicians who just graduated and we're chasing our music dream full time. We are trying to book a tour and would love to add, insert venue name, to our list of shows. Uh, I always like to throw in high frequency words like love, like we would just love to come. Like, keep it positive. You know what I mean? You want to you want to put good energy into this email. So, another thing to note here is know your venue, kind of. Okay, if you're reaching out to a venue that only does three hours worth of cover material and originals are going to be frowned upon, you might want to lean that way on your email. Say, I would love to bring a three-hour upbeat cover set to insert venue name. If you're playing somewhere that's strictly original, that you're going to push your original music at, like a uh, I don't know, a famous venue or one that's very not covery. Be like, hi, I would love to bring our set of upbeat, popular uh, originals that we've been honing to your venue. So know your venue is another thing because some venues are going to have zero interest in you playing an hour worth of originals. And maybe that marks you out of that venue just in general. But if not, uh, you just want to wanna be specific. If not, keep it super broad and let them ask you, which is another way to go. But I would prefer to... Say, hey, this venue, I see what bands are having. I see what times the bands are playing at. I see the videos. They're playing covers. Boom, we'll sneak a few originals in, that kind of thing. So send that over. Putting the correct energy into this is very important, I think. So, moving along. Uh, underneath that, I would put... it. Anyways, uh, I would make sure you're dropping the correct venue names in, of course. Like, especially if you're copy and pasting emails, which I try not to do. I'll just copy the main one and always drop in the, the venue names. Anyways, that seems important. You know what I mean? The next up, I would put your track record in smaller print. I'd put every show you played. I'd say, here's our track record. Here's every show we played. If it's six shows, list all six. If you played open mic night, list it. Uh, put the city next to it or whatever. Uh, anything to make it seem like you played some. Because I want bands that are playing. Underneath that, the same, probably like 12 size font. I would put, here's our current bookings. Put everything you got booked. Put your fall schedule. Put uh, all that stuff. Uh, if you don't have anything booked, you can skip this. So if you're just starting, you know, you could... Uh, Wait until you do have something. Um, yes. Moving along. Underneath that, let's see what I've got. Underneath that, this this is a pretty short email. You know, you don't want it to be too long. I was, I was doing too long emails at the front. I learned from that. Uh, I would say, essentially, we love, insert the town they're in, and your venue, insert venue name, and would love to come play an amazing set for you guys in insert time. We will put on a great show that your audience will not forget. Just kind of gas yourself up a little bit. Um, and then I'd say below, I will attach a link to my EPK, a link to our video from our show, Insert Place, and a link from the other night show at Insert Place. Just as many links as you can tag underneath that is great. And then I say, thanks for your help getting us booked. Yet again, assuming they're going to book us, which is great. And your name. And a lot of people like to use representation. They like to have a manager. Even if it's not a real manager, they just get somebody to, or they use their name in the email. Personally, I had less luck than that than using my own name, but maybe that might be just a me thing because I, I feel like the only person who's going to really push you right when you're small and fighting for yourself is you. You know what I mean? That being said, if you've got a great manager, send it. That looks better. Representation won't hurt. Won't hurt one bit. And then underneath all of that, you'll see I have linked to our latest single, link to James Tank latest single on every streaming platform, my phone number, my email, my booking email, my website, and my logo very small at the bottom. Makes you look more professional, in my opinion. So the whole pitch thing, which is rule number three, hone your pitch, is keep it brief, show that you're playing shows, show that you've played shows, show that you're passionate about what you're doing, 
without writing an absolute story. You do know what I'm saying? Like they don't need to read your whole bio that you've got in your Spotify. They don't need to read six paragraphs about how you started, two members left, they joined again, your buddy quit, you started singing, that sort of stuff. They don't give a fuck. They just want to hear that you're playing shows, that you're doing what you're doing, and you love it. And when I started formatting my emails like this, I'm giving you guys all my tricks, man. You guys are going to be getting all my gigs. Uh, no, nah, no worries. This is what the whole point. It, um, it really changed things for me once I got the email honed down, um, which moves me into rule number four or step number four, excuse me. Reach out. A lot of people aren't even reaching out. They're asking other bands like, hey, can you give me the contact or can you, can you reach out to so-and-so for me? Do not do that necessarily <laughs> i mean surely some exemptions but reach out yourself almost all these venues if you go to their email if you go to their instagram they have their email listed in there it'll be in their bio it'll be in there reach out to that email go to facebook reach dm them as soon as you email them dm them as well uh if you can find a way to message them on instagram DM them on Instagram. Say, hi, I'm very interested in playing your venue. My band has been playing all over the place, and we would love to come play at your place. Uh, do you guys have a booking contact I could reach out to? And reach out every way you can because there might be a certain way that they do it. Some of the biggest venues that you wouldn't suspect literally book through Facebook Messenger. You know what I'm saying? And if you email their email 100 times, they might never answer, but you Facebook message them once, and they answer in two hours. That's an important tip I never picked up on until recently. Uh, email is definitely the most important, I'd say. It's the most frequently uh, utilized. But reach out to all of them and keep reaching out, I think. Uh, I see a lot of bands just like like hoping it'll happen, hoping places will reach out to them. It's not really going to happen until you've built up something that's worth reaching out to. This is all in the building process, per se. And I'm still learning all this stuff myself. Don't forget that. So I'm not I'm not trying to come in here like some big dog that's been touring my whole life. I haven't. We've been on one tour, 30 dates in three states. You know what I mean? So this is just me trying to help, though, from what I've learned in my uh, brief but efficient run. So moving along, step number four. I, was, I just think it's funny when YouTube videos do this. Step four is – or no, no, no. That last one was step four. Step five. Step five is reach out again. This is the second most important step, I think. Okay, I can't tell you how many times I've reached out to venues – Send them this beautifully crafted email that I just told you. And um, nothing. Nothing for six months, eight months, a year even. And I used to, when I first started, I was like, dang it, man. I just wish they would book me, you know. And then I had to get over that little pity party thing and just keep reaching out. Reach out once every two weeks. Uh, follow up. Respond to your own email that they haven't responded to and say, hey, uh, just checking back in. Uh, this is James Tank. Just checking back in. I uh, wanted to say that we've been playing. We played nearby, insert venue name. We played nearby, insert venue name, and we killed it. Here's a video from that show. Give them some more evidence. Give them something that says you're working. Or, hey, uh, we just had a write-up done by the Red and Black in Athens, Georgia. Here's the article. Read about us. Uh, we would still love to come play your venue. Give us a shout anytime. Here's my phone number. Boom. I've had so many of those go through. I've had, I can't tell you how many venues it's taken Three follow-up. No, 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 not even three. Three to ten follow-ups. I have people that I'm still reaching out to, to this day, from venues that I want to play. I've sent them 10, 15 messages. They haven't responded. I'm going to keep sending them. They're going to hear from me, you know what I mean? And I've had a few, like, uh, for example, this one venue in Columbia. Literally reached out to them for a year. Once every two weeks, sent an email. Uh, I've missed a few weeks here and there, don't get me wrong. But literally the other week, they messaged me back and said, Hey, sorry I never got back to you. Are you available next week? They had somebody canceled. They needed somebody. Boom, who's been hitting them up? Oh, there's that guy that's been annoying the shit out of us for a month. You know what I mean? Let's get him in there. We got in there. We played it. We built a relationship. I just met, emailed him a minute ago. So thanks for having us. We had a blast. Uh, sorry I had to pester you, but uh, hope you hope you enjoyed us. And he said, yes, dude, I'm sorry it took me so long to respond. That's my bad. Um, let's get you back as soon as possible. See, relationship built, which is another thing to note. This isn't necessarily a uh, a step yet. It should have been a step. But uh, build build relationships with these venues. Try to try to befriend the managers. Try to uh, understand what they're trying to do. The more you understand what they're trying to do, the better you can do what you're doing. So, like, if they're trying to build a certain following, or if they're trying to have a night for just music, you know, if you're building a relationship with these guys, and some of these managers, they've just ended up being great friends of mine. You know what I mean? They're just booking. Their their main job is to make money. Of course, they're not. A lot of them are not necessarily worried about the music as much. 
But if you can befriend them, the first person that'll come to mind when something goes astray or they need somebody is you. And that's what keeps you on the road, if you know what I mean. Oh, excuse me. And on that note, just befriend the manager. Try to befriend the bar. It's like It's so much more fun to play a bar that you're friends with the people there, the manager and the, the bartenders. Say thanks to the bartenders for having us tonight. Hope everybody tips their bartenders. And uh, thank you to the manager for having us. Always thank your venue at the end of the show. Um, this kind of stuff builds repertoire, builds you, it gives you a good energy, a good vibe, and it keeps you coming back, which is important as well. And the audience loves it, I think. I think they love to be a part whether or not they realize it the bar they frequent is kind of part of their personality you know like uh if you're going to a certain bar you kind of have a connection with it and the vibe there and you know the bartenders you know the manager you see the guy walking around it's like oh there's that band you can become known as the band that plays that bar or that venue you know and build your following there which is important so i think that's all for reach out again just just reach out again and again if they're not responding just keep going keep going unless you're getting a bad vibe or something just just keep going Find different ways to reach out. Send them different stuff. Send them press. Send them videos from your show. Send them pictures. Send them. Uh, I, I, at the end of this year, my plan is to send a lot of these venue managers that I build relationships with. I'm going to send them uh, a bottle of wine or some champagne or something. You know, some uh, just a bottle in the mail to build a relationship. Uh, these guys have really helped us out. You know, took a shot on us because you got to think these guys have everything to lose. You have everything to gain. You know. If you come in and a band comes in and they suck, you know, they they really they can really run a crowd out of a bar or venue, you know, and uh, they just they're not putting off the right vibes. They got bad energy. People leave. Who loses the the band or the bar? The bar. They're gonna lose money. The, it's important to have people bringing people in. So the first time they're taking a shot on you, man, just try to gas yourself up. Make sure they don't regret it, you know. And that's another that goes back to honing your craft. Make sure your craft's ready before you reach out to some massive venue. Tell them you can fill the house. Um, you know what I mean? Like build, like it's better to play to a a smaller crowd in a smaller venue, or a bigger crowd in a smaller venue than a small crowd in a big venue. I always remember that. Yes. So that leak takes me to rule number six. These are pretty simple rules, man. It seems pretty simple. Um, play shows, rinse, repeat. Play shows, rinse, repeat. Take what I'm telling you, and if you're not hearing anything back from people, just keep hammering those local shows. Keep hammering them, keep playing them, and the people will take notice if you're pulling crowds and you're doing what you need to do. You take the shows that you get. Say, say you get a show in a town that's an hour and a half away. You've never played there. You go play there, you film that guy, and you send it to all the other venues in town. Say, hey, we just played, insert venue name, right up the street from you guys. We had a blast. Check out this crowd. Boom. They watch the video. We would love to come play your venue as well. Uh, here's our rate, or I don't even like to list my rate in the, another thing, no, I don't like to list my rate, I wouldn't like to talk money, let them offer it to you, and then, uh, just say, hey, we've been, we, we're trying to break into Clemson, or we're trying to break into Tuscaloosa, we're trying to break into Myrtle Beach, we would love to come play your venue as well, and just that evidence, like, oh, uh, that bar up the street's booking them, why aren't we booking them, you know, it, it creates a sense of, why aren't we booking this band as well, like a fear of missing out kind of thing, it's the energy you want to put across, it's like, hey, everybody else is booking us, man. Why aren't you, you know? So I think that's important, and I would just just do that. Try to get press in the town. Send it to press and say, hey, uh, any sort of write-ups. They maybe don't do as much for you exposure-wise. Like, I don't know how many people are just scanning news things to read, you know. But you can share them. You can send them to venues. It's a great look for your band or your brand. And on the play shows, rinse, repeat thing, that's just great. Just keep playing. Uh, the tip that I found, I don't know if I said this already, but maybe – a very important realization for this tour of me was the best way to get shows is to have shows. The best way to get shows is to have shows. If you can send a venue a list, your tour list, and you've got 30 shows coming up, they're like, damn, 30 shows. You know what I mean? They're like, wow, everybody's booking this guy. Why aren't we, you know? 30 shows is evidence enough that venues and bars are booking you. That's what they want to see is your track record. They're like, they don't want to take a shot on some band with no track record. They won't like, they're like, oh, these guys are playing insert venue name this big in the same town. Hell yeah, they can play, you know? They want to see people that are doing this for real. They want to see people passionate about it. You know what I mean? And I think that's an important thing to put across. So I'm glad if you made it this far, I'm pretty proud of that. This has been episode 50 of the James Stone on the Rocks podcast. Uh, I know I got a little serious. I usually smile during these guys, but I, I'm pretty passionate about this and I want to see more bands doing well. I see a lot of great bands in my town even just not going to play other towns. I don't know whether that be lack of interest 
or what, but I think when, when you should. I think it's really easy to be a humongous fish in a small pond. You know what I'm saying? Like to just play your city your whole life would be easy to do. And it would be easy to build a following that way, in a way. But if you can go out, and I said this in an interview one time, but it sounded so stupid when I read it back. If you can go out and try to be a medium-sized fish in every town, I think that would be more beneficial than being a big fish in one town. So think of it that way. Like it's a pond, and you're trying to be a medium-sized fish in every town would be better than being a big fish in one town. Now, the goal is to be a big fish in every town, but that takes time. you got to be a medium-sized fish first. You know, you got to grow your friends. you got to swim around. Such a bad analogy, but it's funny. Anyways, I think that's it. If any bands have any questions for me, reach out anytime. I would love to answer them. Once again, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. I've only done one tour, but I feel like I've learned enough to where these tips are valuable, and I'm at least putting the right energy in for to, to help people out. And uh, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe to this channel. We're trying to make a lot more videos like this. Let me know if you guys like videos like this. This is the first tutorial-style video I've made, tutorial-style podcast per se. And um, I'm excited to see how it does. I hope you guys like it. Drop me a like, a comment, that sort of stuff. Check my band out. Band name is Jameson Tank on Spotify, App App Apple Music, Amazon, all those streaming services. I'll tag a link to our music up above. Check out our tour dates. I'm going to tag our tour dates. The tour's coming to an end, but you can catch us on the spring tour, which I'm booking now. Um, and maybe I'll make one of these once every year if, if there's, I'm sure I'm going to learn new stuff as we get to be a bigger fish. The end goal being for us to get on opening shows with bigger bands, um, tours with bigger bands, festivals help a lot. And, but this is how it starts right here. I think this is a good template for a local band trying to cross over into tri-state sized band. Um, national is next, right? So yeah, just thank you guys for listening in. Please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Give me your energy. I love what you guys are doing. Thank you guys for making the podcast huge. Thank you for making 50 episodes. We're 50 episodes deep right now. This is the 50th one. We're going to try to make more. We've got great guests coming. got great music coming. Great stuff. Just subscribe below. Thank you guys so much. Jameson Tank out. See ya. What a beautiful Yeah.